Hey you, welcome back to my channel for our Plant Therapy Thursday session where we enter the plant kingdom and explore weird and beautiful plants from around the world. From relaxing rainforest plants to sculptural desert cacti and succulents. Alright, this is fantastic. I've got a remote for you guys so I'm able to turn the camera on and off and I've got a coffee. This is going to be this is going to be a good time. So, uh, well, except that my blinds broke when I was trying to <laughs> trying to set up for this uh, this video, my blinds just like snapped, so they're literally hanging by a thread from uh, the like little fixture. Like the, they're just a little mini blinds, but anyway, hopefully they can hang up there a little bit longer, <laughs> at least until we get this done. And if they come crashing down, um, uh, don't worry. I, I think we're gonna be okay. Um, it's, but I, get, I might have to move this plant out of the way though. Maybe move it a little. Maybe move it a little more this way, <laughs> just in case. I've got my work table set up in here inside the house today because it's really hot out today so we're having uh, a little bit of a burst of heat out there so we wanted to still film videos though so Michael helped me set up my work table in here and we're going to do some repottings of tropicals today. So I've got this Monstera ansonii and it is needing some new soil. So the leaves on the Monstera ansonii they're quite thin and they lose water pretty quickly so these tend to like soil that's a little more moisture Attentive. They still like fast draining soil where it doesn't stay, you know, uh, too soggy for too long. Um, but they want it to be a little more moisture retentive so they can at least get a chance to grab some of that moisture instead of it just immediately draining away from it. Okay, before we get started, I gotta get one more sip of my coffee. Ice blended coffee on a hot day. Oh, it is so good. Um, okay, I'm gonna set this down over here and I'm gonna try my best not to fling soil into my coffee. So we will get started here. So whenever I'm uh, you know, planting up into a new pot, I just cut out a piece of window screen, place that over the drainage hole, and it helps keep the soil in the pot so it doesn't start escaping through the drainage hole. Normally I just have to cut out a little piece, but this, this pot, I think this is the one I'm probably gonna use for this plant, but I, I won't know until I actually get it out and see the roots. Um, so this has, it doesn't have like just one hole on the bottom, it's got holes like all the way around the bottom edge. Okay, we're going to start mixing up our soil for the Monstera. Now one of the really cool things about Monstera ansonii is that they're from the Amazon regions of Peru, Ecuador, Brazil. So they're actually from the rainforest and they are a type of epiphyte. So they climb up other trees, they'll climb up the bark and you know kind of hold onto the trunk. And if you ever see pictures of them in their natural habitat in the wild in the rainforest, it is just so cool. They, they you know actually wrap their aerial roots around the trees and it's just it's really neat watching them like climb in the wild you know and it's it's an amazing thing to be able to own one of those plants from the Amazon rainforest and actually have that in your house you know so all right what we're gonna be doing is figuring out what type of soil like how to customize our soil so it is best serving the plant and gives it all the nutrients and moisture that it needs and at the same time it's fast draining it has the right level of being fast draining right so how do we figure out what type of soil like how to customize our soil for this Adansonii. Well, one of the things that you want to look at is aside from how its natural habitat is, you know, it's an epiphyte, so that's going to tell you right there that it wants fast draining, like super extremely fast draining soil. It doesn't want to be in anything that's too heavy, but at the same time, they do need moisture because it is from the rainforest, and so it's used to having a lot of moisture around it. It's humid, it gets a lot of rainfall, so we want to find that right balance. So I'll go ahead and share the ingredients of what I'm using but then you can customize it to what's available in your area and you don't have to use like the same exact potting soil I'm using just use your favorite type of potting soil and I'll just let you know what's in here so um, something else about the what the plant grows in the Adansonii it does like a peat based uh, type of soil which a lot of times uh, whenever I'm like filming potting videos I normally don't use anything with peat in it but this happy frog does happen to have peat just because I know that these rainforest plants they do like like that sphagnum peat moss. Okay, so this happy frog potting soil contains 50 to 60% aged forest products, so lots of organic materials in there, uh, and bark product, uh, sphagnum peat moss, perlite, and fertilizer. It also has like humic acid and soil uh, microbes, so it, it has a, um, a good mix for the tropicals. But like I said, don't feel like you have to use the exact brand that I'm using. Um, just use your favorite potting soil or whatever happens to be available to you in your area. 
And then for the gritty mix or the part, the ingredients of the soil that is gonna add that aeration, it's gonna make it really fast draining. It's a mix of uh, cocoa peat and then mostly cocoa chips and pumice. So that is just three ingredients in the gritty mix that I'm gonna be using. And I'm doing one part of the gritty mix to the one part of potting soil. And I decided to add some long fiber sphagnum moss. So this is the long fiber sphagnum moss that I'm using and you can find it in the orchid section of like Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, so I'm just gonna use a few handfuls of this and I just wanna show you guys up close how the texture of the sphagnum moss is and how some of the pieces can kind of clump together like this, so it's like a hard little clump. So you wanna break that apart. So we want our plant roots to be happy to find little pockets of moisture within the soil, but we just don't want to overwhelm the roots where we end up causing root rot in a certain area uh, by having too much. But this will create perfect little pockets of moisture if we break it down so it's small enough and it doesn't need to be super small. I'm just breaking up those big pieces and it just takes a minute to really go through it and break up any little hard bits. But if you want, you could speed it up and just take scissors and just chop, chop, chop and that will break it up really quickly too. I think we're pretty much good. So in their natural habitat, epiphytes like Monstera adansonii, they're clinging to trees. So they're holding onto the bark. And so part of the way that they get their food and their moisture is from the debris that gets caught in the plant and around the roots, right where it's holding onto the tree. So adding sphagnum moss is kind of replicating, or it's one way to replicate some of the debris that would be caught in the roots of the Monstera adansonii or any other epiphytes like that. And so all of that extra organic matter, it ends up retaining more water, more moisture, so it catches more rain and holds on to the rainwater more. Um, so it helps the plant in that way so it can get its drink of water. And also the plant matter as it's breaking down, it is kind of like a natural compost. And so it's actually feeding the plant at the same time. So the plant benefits a lot from having that organic matter getting caught at its roots while it's climbing up the tree. So when we're creating our soil mix, that's what we're keeping in mind is what's going on in its natural habitat. And we wanna to try to mimic that as closely as possible, but at the same time, keeping in mind our location, so our climate and any adjustments that we might need to make to where we're growing it. Um, so that is the whole idea behind every time that we're creating our soil mixes, whether it's for cactus and succulents or for epiphytic uh, aeroid plants like monsteras. And then I'm also gonna add some charcoal. The activated charcoal that I'm using, I actually found in the aquarium section at Walmart. And you can find this in pet stores too, but Walmart was cheaper. So that's what the activated charcoal looks like. So it's kind of just like little pebbles almost looks like little lava rock pieces. So there's a few different reasons that you can use charcoal, horticultural charcoal or activated charcoal in your soil mixes. One is to, um, well, one is that it's a natural filter and the other is it actually can absorb some of the nutrients and it can hold that in the soil while also filtering. So it's another kind of experiment that I'm just gonna try out and just see what happens. I'm just gonna sprinkle in a little bit. Okay, now we've got all of our ingredients in our soil. We're gonna mix it together. Okay, I just wanna bring you guys in closer so you could really get an idea as we're mixing this of the texture of our soil recipe here. And just really see, you know, it's gonna be fast draining, but it does have plenty of moisture retentive ingredients in here. And it's very rich, but still light and airy. So we're working with epiphytes. Um, these are specifically uh, this plant family that we're working with, you know, the monsteras. They are from the aeroid family. And so they are the tropicals. And this I think is gonna be a beautiful mix for them. I think they'll really like this a lot, but we're gonna find out. I'll have to do some updates after, after I have it grown in this for a while. So we'll see. I'll report back to you guys, but okay, let's go ahead and get our pot out and we will start getting this potted up. So there's a couple different ways that we could go about unpotting a staked up plant. You could hold the stake, you know, gently as you're unpotting the plant um, and just keep it, keep it on there. Or you could undo any of the ties, let the vines go free, repot it, restake it. Um, so I think I might just try leaving the stake in first and then if it gets a little difficult, then we'll undo the, the stake and everything. So let's just see first how this goes. And what I'll do is I'll just use my little tub here to dump out the soil. So I'm grabbing the stake at the bottom 
I'm just gonna hold on to that as I work the plant free. Just loosening it away from the sides. Let's just see, let's see how, how dangerous <laughs> this is gonna be. the steak touching anything because I got I got vines up there and I don't want the vines like getting pinched. Alright. That last batch of soil that I did was just straight out of the bag and um, it didn't like it. I can tell. I can tell it well just by looking at the plant. I mean you can tell it's uh, it's parched. It was not being able to get enough uh, moisture and it wasn't able it wasn't able to hold on to the moisture enough. So that was a no-go. Wow, that soil just like fell away. Super easy. Now that soil is pretty fresh and I am gonna reuse it, but for something else, we'll probably like add that into like a, a succulent mix or something. I think it's gonna be much happier with this soil. The stake and the roots are right at the same level here. I'm just scooting the roots out of the way. So it's just the stake going down first. And I'll let the roots kind of get situated back around it, but I'm just making sure I don't like set the, the stake down on top of roots. I'm just going to scoot that stake a little, a little more. It's going to be kind of centered, but it, it will be a little closer to one side. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be perfectly centered or anything. Just get it in there. However, however you like it. Okay. Let's get back to one. Okay, you guys, the AC popped on, and I'm sorry, I'm just gonna let it cool down because it's really hot and sweaty in here right now, so we're gonna have to let that run for a little while. So I do apologize for the noise, if you can hear that, or if it's quite loud. Um, it'll turn off pretty soon, though. So what's really interesting about these Monster Adansonii is, well, this is a juvenile plant here, so it's got small leaves, and what's interesting about that is, as they are small, they like to do the running, which is like where they're all, you know, trailing along the ground, like more, you know, horizontal plane before they start climbing. And then when they start maturing is when they really want to climb upwards. But since we have, you know, uh, quite small leaves up here, we wanted to get those vines up because once they do go up, you know, once they are attached to a stake, the leaves will start getting bigger and bigger. So um, they, yeah, you can see the leaves up here, they're pretty tiny and I was like, okay, we're, they're getting too small as far as like lighting goes. These like uh, filtered bright light. So they like as bright a light as you can get them, but not too much sunlight, like dappled sunlight at most or filtered sunlight, because if they get sunlight hitting the leaves, they will, they will end up yellowing. So if you ever get like curling leaves, um, that's a sign of dehydration and uh, the plant is getting too much light for the amount of moisture that it has available to it. So um, yeah, that's, that's one thing that I deal with here in the desert is I, I do get some curling leaves if I have it too close to some of our windows back here. So I normally try to pull it back a little bit, um, especially like just early morning light is all it takes. Like, it, well, we're in, the, we're in the prime heat of summer right now. So that sun is super strong, when it, especially when it comes through the windows. You know, it can kind of magnify the sun a bit. So just watch out if you do have it by a window because it can intensify that heat and it can cause those leaves to start curling or yellowing. Since this is a rainforest plant, I'm gonna change up how I'm watering it. So it wants extremely fast draining soil, but at the same time, they are rainforest plants and they want consistent moisture. Like think about what it would be like to be in the Amazon rainforest and how like wet, you know, humid, wet, it probably rains, you know, like every night or something. And so, although these aren't getting like fully gushed probably with water, you know, cause there's all, there's other trees and everything, you know, there's a canopy that does, you know, add in like a dappling effect to any rain that is coming in. So they're not getting like totally soaked, you know, every night, I imagine. I imagine they're just getting like this dappled rainfall, you know, just like they get the dappled light. So if we can kind of mimic what's happening in their natural habitat, that's gonna make these plants as happy as they can be in your house. And that's what's fun about growing these kind of plants because you you can work with them and they are very reactive and interactive with you on how you care for them. And any little changes you make, you know, you move them towards a window or away from a window or, you know, to another part of your house, 
They're going to react to the heat that they're feeling. They're going to react to the amount of light they're getting, the amount of water they're getting. And you can just kind of tweak things just a little bit at a time, you know, and just experiment with it. And that's what is so fun about growing plants and indoor potted gardening. You know, I think I'm going to have to make up a little more soil here. Yep, we're, we didn't quite get it. Let's make a little more. So I'll, I'll whip that up and I'll be right back. Okay, I just mixed up a little more soil. Let's get that in there. And I'm going to pile this soil pretty much up to the top of the pot because this plant is still uh, running, which means it's still kind of like crawling and putting down roots. So if I was to let these vines actually down and I had a big enough space, it would still be putting down roots into the soil until it got a little bit older and then it would find a tree and start climbing up the tree. Um, but I don't want it to do that. I want to start climbing now because these little leaves are so itty bitty. I want them to start getting bigger instead of producing like the little tiny leaves. So uh, we're just going to kind of rush that process, make it climb now, and it will mature as it's growing up the stake. I'm kind of just experimenting here, seeing what it's going to be like because this is in a, quite a large pot now for it. But I just want to see how long it's going to take for it to fill this pot out and if it's going to change the size of it. Because every time I repot this, it fills out the pot really fast. So I'm just curious how this is going to go. Um, so I just wanted to do this as an experiment instead of just potting. Like it could definitely have stayed in this, this little pot here. That was That's actually quite a large pot for it too. And it probably would have been fine in there. But out of curiosity, I just want to see what happens in the bigger pot. So I'm just tamping down that soil, just feeling for any air gaps down there because this soil or this, uh, yeah, our soil recipe is so light and fluffy, it's going to, you know, it's going to hold some air down there until we tamp it down. I'm not pressing too hard, just enough to kind of settle the soil and that way it won't settle too terribly much later on. I can tell you already though, the soil mixture is going to be way better than what we had it in before. I don't know what I was thinking before, especially in the desert, that was not going to be enough. I mean, I'm always kind of concerned about root rot, so I tend to err on the side of making the soil, you know, a little more on the greedy side of things, but uh, sometimes I also forget that I am in the desert <laughs> and uh, it is already extremely dry here, very low humidity. We need to give it some extra love and care. Try to make it feel at home, you know, give it some more moisture. That's another reason why I'm gonna be watering it a little more often. So I'm just gonna give it a little shake and let the air pockets kind of settle. Let's see if we need to add any more soil. Let's see how we're doing in there. I think we're good. Let's see here. Okay, so it's in a lovely black nursery pot now, which I wanted it in a plastic pot because um, after having experienced some of my monsteras in ceramic and the way they fill out the pot and they don't want to come out, like the roots are very vigorous growers on monsteras. And so having them in plastic pots, I've just found that it's easier when it comes time to have to repot them. Um, it's easier to you know work them out of the pot you know with that flexibility and it's also lighter weight if you go to move them because the way that they fill out the pots and they're such vigorous growers um they get very heavy in the pots and so they can the, the big ones well well not this one this one's uh this one's a juvenile um here but once the monster is really start getting large i'm thinking um, I want to transfer all of these into black plastic nursery pots and just have them in like decorative baskets or something so they're not uh, backbreakers. <laughs> that, that's what I call big heavy pots, you know, the backbreakers. Um, and I'd rather preserve my back whenever possible because oh, it never fails. I'm always going to be shifting pots. That's never going to end. So, uh, you know, when you're moving plants from window to window, trying different areas, um, you know, or shifting them, turning them and everything, it's just nicer to have them in lighter weight materials, lighter weight pots, um, unless they're like little pots. Now, when it comes to like my cactus and succulents, those all go in terracotta pots. Um, but these tropicals that get big, I think we're going to stick with the plastic pots for these. Um, okay, now I'm going to water this little baby. Okay, I decided I'm going to water this outside because I'm going to give it a full deep watering. So I'm going to use probably this entire watering can in it. And we're just going to give it a good deep water. And also I'm going to look for how fast it drains. Oh, and I'm using rainwater. Get one on this side. 
Now by the time I get done using this whole watering can, we should see water coming out the bottom. Okay, yeah, it's coming through the bottom now. I'm gonna go inside and grab a little more rainwater and uh, finish watering this and then I'll let it drain out here and then we'll bring it inside. Hey guys, it's the next day and I was just about to put this in its plant stand. I have a vintage rattan plant stand set up in the living room waiting for this. And so we watered this yesterday evening and I was just about to put it in the plant stand and then I was like, well wait, let's go ahead and add a couple handfuls of worm castings just to top it off, give it a little bit of food and enrich that soil a little bit. And for worm castings, I'm just using this wiggle worm brand. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a few handfuls around the top of the soil. And then next time I water, it'll start working its way down into the soil. You could also mix it into your soil uh, your soil recipe if you want, like when you're actually mixing it, but um, either way works. Okay, so we topped off our pot with a little bit of extra richness and food for our plant, and now I'm gonna go put it in the plant stand. All right guys, there's the Monstera ansonii, and I was just giving it a spray of water. So I have this handheld pressure sprayer I really like this a lot for spraying the plants and it just helps add extra humidity and it kind of mimics the type of natural rainfall that they would get. So I've got my rainwater in here. So I'm just gonna give it a little more water here. So I just kind of go up the stake and just kind of get those vines a little too, kind of hit some of their aerial roots and up that cocoa fiber pole, just to get that a little bit damp. And so it just helps produce extra uh, humidity because we are in the desert and it's pretty dry here. So these tropical plants, these rainforest plants that you know grow along the equator, they get really dried out uh, fast here in the desert. So um, it takes a little extra work here to add some humidity back into their environment. Um, but it also helps having more plants too because when you have more plants, they can help produce their own humidity and they have their damp soil, so that helps too. And another option is investing in a humidifier that would help too. I don't know if we're gonna do that or not. I kind of, I love the dry air personally, but um, the plants, it just it's just that these particular plants <laughs> want a little more uh, humidity. So I will spray them, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna get them an actual humidifier, but that is an option. I feel like they always get so happy whenever I spray them too. It's like they just instantly start perking up. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys, uh, share the repotting. Oh, and that rattan plant stand I got at an estate sale. Okay, and just to give you an idea of the type of lighting that it's in, I have it in front of this big window in our living room right now, and this is the most gentle lighting in our house. It's It gets enough bright light, but it's all indirect light. Like it barely gets any kind of sunlight coming through here, even though this is the southwest side of our house here. Now, normally south or west facing windows, they get more sun or they get hotter sun because normally it's afternoon sun. But the thing is we have a patio right outside this door and it has a large overhang that blocks all of the sunlight that would naturally be coming in through a south or a west facing window. And we also have a uh, palm tree right outside that also blocks some of the lighting. So it's gonna get plenty of bright indirect light all day long, but no direct sunlight. And I actually just took a cutting about a month ago from this plant and I propagated it in water and I was gonna pot that up with you guys in this video too, but I just realized that this is probably gonna be too long, so I better save that for the next next video. So we'll do that one um, in kind of a part two to this. Okay. I love you guys. Have an awesome day and I wish you the best success in growing your plants. I love you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.